and welcome, welcome back, back to another episode of The Long Dark. No, no, I'm just kidding. We are not doing video recordings, so none of this matters. And instead, we have the screen over yonder here. We got, we got Ammon here. Ammon, you're probably most likely going to be watching later. Anything you want to say to repeat yourself? No. All right, uh, future Kenny, in case you're watching this, so avoid the clap. Really. It takes so long to get rid of, and it hurts. So, um, yeah, that's good advice. So last time, it was about a month ago, uh, we went over how to read um, Python. And I can give you some homework to practice reading uh, Python and just kind of from a general perspective, you don't necessarily need to know what all of this crap in the middle here does, but more generally what is taking place um, from, a, from a very surface layer perspective, right? Like, you don't have to say things like, oh, and then you went over and you opened up the gas tank and you put the gas bump nozzle into the gas tank and you turn it on, you just have to say things like, Went to a gas station, got gas, left. Very surface layer stuff. Um, how did you do with that? I didn't do it. You didn't do it. You have shame, shame your family <laughs> uh, for generations, generations to come. Okay, well, we're going to go over the uh, examples, well, this, this first example here is one that I talked about in the video, we'll go over that again, and we'll go over uh, one of the easy ones, one of the medium ones, and the only hard one that I gave that kind of... Do you hear that? Is this the, uh, the sirens that it says bombs are coming? Oh, okay. Sounds like a vacuum's going on, but no, it's probably not. Um, Yeah. It's, it's kind of boring. Uh, okay, so for Python, do you remember what an import is? Taking something from somewhere else and implementing it into your stuff to be technical. Yes, yes, yes that, that is the most technical evaluation of the import function Python I've heard. To date, you take stuff that exists somewhere else and put it into your stuff for it to be used. Um, that's exactly right. So here we see that there is a JSON thing that exists somewhere else, a JSON library, mm -hmm. and you have the HTTP lib library that exists somewhere else. And instead of taking all that code and copying and pasting it into the file, um, Python allows you to just say, hey, look here, and I'm going to talk about things that are over there and just do them the way they exist over there, but to do them here. Okay. Um, so here we have uh, the next one here, connection equals this string. Uh, I just want you to try and say aloud what you think is happening, like what you think connection is, first of all. Like what is connection according to your previous studies? Like, X equals seven. What is X? Um, are you generally not in this oh. specific like I don't like this is the gas tank scenario which is going to gas? What is what kind of thing is connection? Connecting two different things together. Um, well, that's what it's doing. Yeah, but it's a uh, it's it's variable. That's sorry. That, that's what I mean by like very high level approach that the, the exact function of connection I don't really care about. Uh, okay. I, I, just, I just want to make sure that you, you can see that this is a variable because it's on the left side of the equal sign, essentially. Okay. Right, like down here, what is the result? Variable. 
Yeah, yeah for, for the, the same, same reason, it sits, sits on the left side of the equal sign. So over here, this is kind of where we get into a little bit more of the, I want to say nitty gritty, but um, this goes over a principle that we touched in, I think, a couple of lessons ago. Um, what does HTTP live? The library? The library. And we know it's a library because we've imported it right here. So what do, what do you think HTTPS connection is in, in contrast to the library? This is more or less a vocabulary course. Okay. Um, so in, in the past, we've been running programs, and inside of those programs, there are things that run that you define, and you say, for this blank, I'm defining this blank as this, and then it runs. Oh, so connection, that's the definition of connection. Right. This is yeah. yeah this is a definition uh, of con connection. Yeah. So we, we have the HTTP live library here, and an HTTPS connection is a method inside of HTTP live. So HTTP live could be this really big library or a really big file with thousands of methods or functions inside that do things. And we're saying, okay, out of all of those, I want to look for one called HTTPS connection. And and we don't really know much about HTTPS connection. We don't have a library open for us to do it. But what we do have is we have this parentheses here, and then we're passing in two arguments. Okay, so for the first argument, we don't really know what it is. All we know is that it's a string. And we can tell it's a string that has quotes around it. Okay? And then for the second part of it, second argument, we know it's a number. Because this is what numbers look like, and it doesn't have quotes around it. Okay. So that's all we know. Connection is a variable, and it equals a method in this library where we're passing in two variables, one is a string, one is a number. Okay. So here, we have something very similar. We have connection, which we know is this variable here, but now we're doing a dot connect to it. This is dot connect, where we're basically saying there's this entire thing here, http lib dot https connection, API park.com 80. This is the entire string there. We take all of this and then we insert it where it says connection here. And then after all this, we would say dot connect. So inside of HTTP lib in the library, there's a method called connect. We're saying with all of this, we're going to do a dot connect. To what, for what reason, we don't know, we don't really care. That's all it's doing. We're taking a method, we're running one method through another method for a reason. Because we can. Okay. So here we got something very similar to connection dot request. So dot request, and there's going to open up here and in here. It's a method. It's just some other part of the program that can do something else. And here it's a little bit different. Here we're passing in a few variables. <clears throat> this is a string. First variable is a string, and we have a comma here, so remember there's another one. Second variable, it's another string, comma. Then we have this weird thing here, the json.dumps. And you have an opening parentheses here, followed by a closing parentheses over here, and another comma. <coughs> um, and so we know that there's that this entire thing is json.dumps. Down here it is its own variable. Okay. And then we have another one here of these curly braces and anything by other curly braces, and that's the fourth variable. So the dot request, we're passing in four variables to it, but two of them are weird looking, right? They seem to have variables in and of themselves that exist, which we're passing along. And this is where we're getting that idea, that concept of being able to nest methods together, right? So you have this main function, and this main function is that look at other functions in the file and then do things to them. And then those functions that are below it might have variable requirements. And those functions might look deeper and have their own variable requirements. So the deeper you go, you have to keep track of because when you request it, you'll have all these nested variables that are going to be passed along and dropped off as you go. Um, 
So this is a little more complicated initial example to go with. Um, but it was more or less just meant to kind of help you identify what it is that we were that I was looking for in, in reading this. Like, I don't care what this variable does. I don't care what dog request does. I don't want you to figure out what dog request does. I just want you to say, OK, this is a variable. And it's running a method as part of this library to do something that requires four variables. That's it. So with all of that, we have this down here, this very last line. And we put you on the spot again. I'm going to ask you to just very high level reading of what the result is. The variable equals the method. This running system is. No, this is a library. So you can see it here. Yep. yep. Okay. So variable equals the library loads method. Yep. So loads is a method within the JSON mm -hmm. library. So whenever you have a library dot something, that something is a method or a function. Okay. It's just a sub program inside the bigger file that does a unique little task for you. So we have loads here, and loads is performing a task. Now, what's unique about the task that it's performing is that we know something about this right here. So that's up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's up here. This is a local variable that we set. Okay, like we open up a new file. And when we try to do connection not get a response, we're going to get an error because we haven't defined what connection is. But what we've done here is we know that the connection here is this entire thing, which we know is part of this library. So we have one library that's using a method to call another library to grab a method in that library. <laughs> to read it, and we're, we're assigning that entire operation to the variable of result. Now, now from here, you can do things like print result, and it will print out whatever it is that this get response or read does based off of this manager and stuff here. If you don't put a print, does it do anything? No. Right, right now, as it stands, I mean, it, it, it will perform all of this, um, and it will tell you if we're having any errors while we're trying to do it. Um, but here, once it assigns the, the output, the variable, mm -hmm. merge it to the variable, if you don't tell it to do anything with that, then it just goes, okay, yeah, I'm done. Mm -hmm. And if you have no way of proving it, then later on, you say, okay, prove it, it goes, yeah, I didn't tell you that. I'll have to do it again and go on to the variable. So after this is an assignment, if you haven't told it to do anything, that kind of just fades off into the distance. You just hear this loud sigh. Okay. All right, so let's, I'm going to go with the, shit. I mean, crap. So here's easy one. So I just want you to, Kind of go through what we just did. Very high level, don't worry about the exact words that are inside uh, this. Just take general information and tell me what you think is happening. This variable equals 50. If that variable equals 10, print whatever's there. If not, prints whatever's there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Is that close? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The only thing that you missed out on is this second line here. So it prints the first line. Oh. It prints the second line. The unique thing about the second line is that you have this str if num. So we know what if num is, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
So, so what does the STR do? We, we've covered this, I think, once before. Um, if you don't remember, that's not a big deal. Yeah. So, so right now, if num is a number, we know that because this is what numbers look like. And it doesn't have quotes or anything. So, so, this, so Python thinks it's a number. And the problem is that if you try to add a string and a number, Python says, look, you're retarded. It's like trying to add a banana to 12. I can't do that. That doesn't make any sense. So if you say, OK, well, pretend the banana is a number, then add them. Or, you know, pretend, sorry, if, if you pretend that 12 is a word and not a number, then you can add a banana to 12. Because now it's just a banana to 12. You're, you're concatenating on the name, right? You're, you're putting the banana up on a shelf, and you're taking the word 12 and putting it up on a shelf next to the banana. And that's essentially what you're saying with STR. You're saying, take it as a number, make it a word, make it a string, and now you're going to add it on there. Okay. Um, so here is the second one. So x variable equals 34 minus 23. Y variable equals hello. And z variable equals 3.45. If z equals 3.45 or y equals hello, y variable equals hello, <coughs> x variable I don't remember what happens, but it's just tabbed in. So it's, it's, it's tabbed in, but are the same? Yeah, yeah, but you're, you're saying that um, the if, uh, everything that falls within the if is tabbed in. So it's just print x, print y happens after the if takes place. Oh, okay. So you, you, know, you see that on here, that if you read it top down, that's what happens. It would react differently if print x was underneath and then it's inside of it. Because if this was false, then it wouldn't print x. Oh, okay. So, so right, oh, right here. x variable equals x plus 1. y variable equals y plus world. And then print x and y. Okay, so, so I'm going to give you a uh, uh, scenario, and I want you to tell me what you think X would print out as, <coughs> or what you think Y would print out as following the logic on this, in this program, okay? Um, as it is. So, due to the evaluation of 34 minus 23. Okay. And Y equals? Hello. Okay. And z equals three point four five. Okay. Here. Z equals three point four five. Or y equals low. So is that true? Uh, yes. Okay. So now that it's true, you go into the get function. Okay. So what is x? Eleven. Okay. So. X, you're, you're now assigning X as a variable again. So you're not saying 11 equals 11 plus 1. You're saying I want to redefine X. So X is no longer 34 minus 23. X equals 11 plus 1. And then Y equals a new variable. Y equals Y plus world, so the world. Exactly. So when you print out X, when you're going to need it, 12. And you print out y. Okay. So, so what, what if z was the number 2? Does not say that it would be true. Wouldn't it? If this was 2 and this was still 3.45, right? Or if this was just 2 and this was 2. If, if this was just 2, this line, uh -huh. then what would happen here? Oh, it would still work because there's some more. Exactly. Yeah. It 
So, so yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's, that's what, what this one's doing. It's a little bit more has, has quite a you know, has a few more steps to it. Um, you're working, working with multiple variables, but that's so why would you just assign M and Q instead of reusing the variable name? Um, sometimes, sometimes it makes sense to keep track of one variable, like if you're using things like pages, or would it be you'd have to have millions of letters because there's that many variables? So well, you just, you're, you're not, not so much concerned about running out of variables, right? You're, you're more or less, you have this value and you needed it to change as the data changes, okay? Um, like uh, if if you have a, a box on a window somewhere, like you've, you've seen those those um, give us your opinion boxes and has like 500 characters left, and then you type the characters to fewer and fewer. What it's doing is each time you press the key, it's doing this evaluation and saying, okay, uh, take that variable and the plus 500 and subtract the one from from it. You don't want to have it say, okay, well, they push the key, go to B. They push the key, go to C. And then have 500 different variables for one value that you're going to need to change as the scenario changes. So that's one example, but it's not, um, it's not the only way that you use it. But that's, that's one reason why. Okay, let's get into a medium difficulty one. Oh, that's hard. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, do your best for this one. So you're importing Rhino and then sort of context. You're also importing clear or CLR. Uh, CLR is the method right here, right? CLR is the method? Or the, um, it is a shit, but it's a thing <laughs> that Bell loves, Beauty and the Beast. It's filled with books. So? Library. <laughs> it's a library. Oh. Duh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so library and then the method, right? Yep. Uh, what's, the, what's the method called? Add a reference. Okay. And, and what, what do we know about add a reference? Has grass on the end? Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, what, what do we what do we call this? Like, like we, we know, know that add a reference is a method. A string. It's a, it's a string. It's, it's a, a variable. So we're, we're in an argument, okay? So add reference is a method, but it requires a string to be passed along to it. Okay, like if it was blank, this might throw an error. So all we know about add reference is that it's a method, but it has one argument requirement. Okay. Um, From now, I should have marked this one apart because I just saw this next portion. I'm going to, I'll just jump, jump in here and kind of explain this. This is grasshopper, this is not equal to this grasshopper. Okay, this is like now, X and X. Um, I mean, I mean no. that it doesn't equal each other, but that they're still the same name. They, they, they have, have the same, they have the same name, but it's like, Um, it's, 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 it's like, like my, my name is K, and the character from South Park is K, but we are not the same person. <laughs> one is an abstraction, and then one is a real thing. Okay. <laughs> kind of what's going on here. We have this variable, it's just an argument of grasshopper. Um, but what they're saying here is that there is a, a, a library, okay, called Grasshopper, 
And inside Grasshopper, there's a dot kernel dot data session, right? Like the deficient section in the library. Okay. And from that library in that section, you're going to import this specific file or method. Okay, you don't want to bring the whole thing because this thing might be for the library of Congress. It might be huge. So you don't want to bring the entire thing to this page. You only want this one little part. So that's what this is saying. Is that they're saying we don't want the entire thing. We just want the small piece that we care about. Sometimes that's important, other times it's not. But we see the same kind of thing here, is we have the library of Grasshopper, and they're saying, okay, we don't want all of Grasshopper, we just want this one section of Grasshopper, and we'll tell you what to do with that information later. So for, for now, we don't, we don't really care about Grasshopper.kernel about data, but what we care about is what's being imported into GH path and data tree. But the fact that they named this variable Grasshopper and this library is called Grasshopper is a kick in the balls of people trying to learn code. Right? Um, it's like later on you'll see that some people will name a variable with lowercase, with lowercase g, and then they'll use an uppercase g over here. And you'll think that they're the same, and your eyes will tell you that they're the same, but programmatically they're completely different. And so, this is a library. Mm -hmm. How can they didn't have? It, it, it could, could very well be that we're on those. No, 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 it's, it's different. So, it, it really is because of size constraints, right? Like maybe Rhino is small, so you don't necessarily have to just cherry pick methods here and there. Okay. And sure, you know, this is small enough, we're not going to really care about it. This is a candy bar, this is an FFM car, this is fine. A grasshopper, grasshopper is a dump truck. That's not an FFM car. So I'm going to take the one freaking rock out of the dump truck that I need and then leave every piece of crap in there. <laughs> but how did you get this library? Because you had to import these libraries. How can you just call that library from without importing it? Um, it's the same, the same way that you would import these. So, so Python has like an entire library. Uh, database. Okay. Like it has its own library of Congress where inside it has a bunch of sub libraries that exist that anyone can access. Anyone can access. Okay. And so they're saying, okay, well, in there, you have a section called Rhino, which really is also just going to be full of hangover. Yeah. You have another one called Strict Economics. It's all small, bring it out of the way. Oh, I see. But you have this thing in there called Grasshopper that is huge. And I don't want all Grasshoppers because I don't want to care about just one pretty book. So we're just bringing one pretty book over. <laughs> Because, because there's no point, point in me getting the entire thing. Okay. And then, and then another book. And then another book, or maybe roll of books from Grasshopper. But, but it's still the same concept that, that it's easier to bring over a small portion of a much larger thing specific to what you need than to bring over the entire thing that could have lagged, you know, logged in the system trying to open up a record of all the data, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's move on to line 12 here. Okay. Variable layer tree equals the um, library data tree. Yep. Is that the method? No, no, no it's doing uh, doing, doing something, something with it. Um, oh, there's it's the library right now. Yep. And then. Uh, it comes from Rhino. Uh, so see the dot here? So, so it's, this, this is inside Rhino. This is inside geometry. geometry. Correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so the dot is, is basically a, uh, um, working your way on an in the system. Okay. 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 So, so it was like a folder within a folder? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. So, so you have this parent folder, you have a most folder with a place called Rhino. And inside there might be 30 different folders, but one of them is called geometry. Okay. And, and inside that, there's another file called geometry base. Okay. Um, also, likewise, there could be a file named Rhino. Inside of Rhino, there could be a method called geometry, or there could be a function inside of geometry called geometry base. It's all just nesting its way down. Okay. Um, which 
it might, might seem very complicated or convoluted, but once you kind of get the hang of how that is spaced out and how that's tied in together, it makes programming so much easier because now you never have to rewrite geometry. Like it's already in existence. You just have to go and point at it and say, this is what I want. And then you can do that in one line of code. And it saves you having to write all the code again. So knowing how to do this will save you so much time, so much effort. By just defining the variable, by just defining the variable and saying, look, import this, this library, and I want you to grab geometry base, which isn't geometry, which isn't Rhino. Why couldn't you just call it geometry base or Rhino? Because inside of Rhino, there's a geometry base. There's a geometry base. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Okay. So you have the same, we don't really know what it does, but we have variable equals a library and call it a library to do something from a library. Okay. And here. Uh keep keep on here really sucks and really bad. I can't throw. I I did it all last to the computer. Oh, you did it? Yeah. Oh, so I said it. For I in range. Yeah, do you remember what the for function is? For, 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 for. So think, think, think of it in like a. <clears throat> think of it in like. One of those war moves, one of those military moves, right? You got that Charles Surgeon over here. like, for every. Queer hating faggot in this company. We're going to run a mile for each one of those shit eating pieces of crap. So for four, okay. every person, thing, things happen. Or an action, something, something happens. Or a. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah no, for, for I, in this case, I use a variable. So it's assigning a variable and then on the block. So for I in, and now it's going to define what that variable is. And the range, it's an, it's a kind of like an automatic method like SDR was in one of the easier ones, right? So range is similar to what SDR is in that you don't have to define the library. Okay. It just comes with the base foundation of, of, a, of a Python file. So there's this thing called range. You also have this thing called len, which is length. You have this, this variable called points, which I don't see anywhere on the page. So we're, we're well, reading this. this. Well, that defines it there, but wouldn't it have to do it before? Um, yes, 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 it would. Well, no. no. OK, so, so here. here. Okay. Points here, point. Okay, this is this is the crap that I was talking about. Uh, points and points are different because it doesn't have yes. So, so this points and this points is a different too. Well, yes, yes, yes but, but but for a different reason. This, this point is here is just it is a range. Okay, it's, it's going to have so right here it says it's, it's going to be a range and you're wanting the length of a point. So somewhere else in the world. Um, <laughs> and I'm guessing that it has to do with line tall there and how it's defined, but you have point equals this. Okay. Remember what this is? This is an array. You can do one, two, three, four, five, seven, and six. Okay. You, 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 you have a range, you have a, an array. Okay. Um, and so it's saying right here, you see these square brackets? Uh -huh. It's saying that there's a data tree, and then right now that geometry, that geometry base is going to return back a series of values in an array that's going to get substituted here. Okay. And somehow that's going to be called points, probably in a data tree. In the library, library after somewhere. somewhere. So, so something's going to require that the points be around. Mm -hmm. And they didn't define it here, which I think is, I think it's another one here. Um, 
but, but yeah, yeah saying you've got this points thing here, and I want the length of that, of that array, which is the size. So over here, we have the zero spot, one spot, two spot, three spot, four spot, four spot the banana, just a five spot, and then the six spot. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, so you have how many variables in here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, so the, the length of this would be potentially seven. Mm -hmm. When they're saying the range, okay, what is the range? I'm guessing that's more of a, like, if it starts with a number three and ends with a number 18, and then range is through the 18. Mm -hmm. So you're saying for i in range, so for each point in range, so 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up to 18, you're going to assign this variable point to the value of points, which is an array, where i is the variable of the number that you're currently on the placeholder. So you're going to place order 3, right? Mm -hmm. Or you're going to place order 0, which is 1. And then points are going to equal points of a lot, or points of zero, which is one. And then it'll increment and say okay, points of one, which is two, and points of two, which is three. And then it's going to do things. Yeah, this is a bad example. I should have read that better. So let's just let's go to the hard one. And then we'll get into some new stuff. Because the, the stuff that I wanted to kind of cover with you, um, it goes into some more practical things, things that you can more or less see and use whenever you're on the tools. So take a, take a smack at it. <laughs> yeah. uh, you're importing random, which is a. A library. Yes. Why does it have print up in the air? Oh, okay. So it's same all can do I assume a game called Guess My Number. Oh, I see what this is. There's the beginning of a number below 100. Try to guess is it in as few goes as possible. And then that one's going out. The number equals, so the variable equals the library random. And then a random integer. Which is the method yep. of one through a hundred. One to a hundred? One and one hundred? So, so, so you're, you're trying to figure out what Rand Int does just by looking at it. But for the, for the sake of the exercise, <coughs> we only care that it takes two arguments. Okay. And both arguments are in the format of numbers. Okay. okay. Uh, the variable guess equals true. Yep. yep. The variable tries equals zero. Yes. Or oh. Mm -hmm. Zero. Because there's no close. Oh, and then that's a number. Okay. Um, while guess exclamation point. Yep. The variable guess exclamation point equals the variable number uh, the variable guess equals input is just a library that it has right it's gonna have to require uh, import it would it print take a guess? Or take, take a guess is the string? Um, no. Argument. Argument. Okay. 
So the exclamation point, do you remember what exclamation point stands for? It's not. Oh. So it's, it's like, like, you know, that equal sign with the slash words, just as it does equal. You don't have that symbol in computers. So to change it, they took that slash and they turned it up on its end. So I have exclamation point equals. Okay. So if, if that does not equal the number. While, okay. Yeah, so what, what does a while loop do? Uh, I don't know how to say it in this terms, but basically while you don't, if it ever saw this person or this thing doesn't guess the number, then it keeps going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Going back to the military drill sergeant, all right? Is a very bad day. <laughs> while, while you puke eating maggots, bigger and complain, you're going to do push-ups. So for as long as they bigger and complain, they will do push-ups. So there's a condition that if it's met, this will go and go and go and go forever. Now, once the condition is not met, it will break out of that loop. Okay. So in this case, the condition is the variable guess that does not equal the number. Okay. Yep. So after this, okay, now, now pay, pay attention here because you have, it is still is indented, it's still tabbed, even though there's space here. It's still tabbed in, so it's still part of this while. So if you take a look at this while goes, it says, okay, if this is true, you're going to do this, and you're going to do this, and you're going to do all of this down here. And if it's false, you're going to skip all this and then move on. But until it is false, you're going to come down to the bottom here. You're going to come back up to the top, and it's going to say, OK, evaluate this unit for me. And if it's still true, then it'll go back through down here, and then go back up. And it'll keep moving like music, right? Mm -hmm. And it'll go over and over and over, and it'll never get to these prints unless it breaks out, it breaks out of this loop. So from here, kind of talk through what is happening. Try. I think, I think very, very quickly. quickly. Um, okay. uh, so the, the difference between a try and an if is you're saying that with the try, you're kind of expecting an error. An error can occur. So you're saying, try this. If you get an error, don't, don't freak out. <laughs> Just keep going. Okay. Oh, I see. Um, try the variable guess equals the library int. What would an important int into one of those? Oh, I see. You are for sure. It's just part of the base of it. It is the opposite of SDR. So SDR, SDR takes a number and converts it to a string. Uh, okay. And we'll take a string and convert it to a number. So it's like taking banana and saying, hey, it's the numerical value of banana. And the computer goes, you're retarded. And you go, oh, okay. But banana equals you're retarded. So, <laughs> it's essentially what it's doing, and that's why it's trying instead of an, an if. It's instead expecting 
Yeah, because yeah. it's, it's basically the actual function of this program is it's asking the user this input command here. It's, 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 it's going to print on the screen, take a guess, and then it's going to wait for the user to type something. And if they type in the banana, when they said, only ask for numbers because people like me exist, you just want to watch the world burn. They say, just give me a number, and I say, okay, banana. They have this try here saying, okay, engage real shit as like any. Try to evaluate their answer as a number. And then when it comes back with an error, we're going to let him know that he's a retard. And then we're going to continue on with the. Uh, so, so it comes back, we'll tell you that was an integer, um, unless or else uh, if guess if the variable is one in between one and hundred, right? Yep. Because if it's between one and hundred, then it won't. They say. It would run it right, but it would basically skip this. Yeah, yeah. So if it passed the try, or guess equals to hint guess, then it goes else. Then it would go out. Okay. And then if the guess is one between one and hundred, program will print the number is between one and one hundred. Uh, and if it's greater than the number. If the uh, variable is greater than the number, the number. If, if it does not equal, yes. So here, here is a little bit different. So you're saying, okay, here, here's the other scenario which kind of shit has going to, going to, going to mess with us. If he does put in a number, and he puts in the number zero, I've already told him it's between one and one hundred. If he puts in zero, I should have. I'm going to respond back and say, Kenny, you retarded. It's between 1 and 100. Uh, how would you put it in 0? Okay. And I'll go in and say, okay, how about 110? And I'll say, hey, retard. <laughs> I said between 1 and 100. However, I want you to run this and do those things. It will actually call me retard a bunch of times. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So, but then um, the, next, the next step is okay. So that covers the boundary. Okay. And it can't be a word, and it can't fall outside of the limits okay. of the game. Okay. And so, if the guess is greater than the number, the number is just random integer, mm -hmm. so between one and hundred. So, if your guess is less or is greater than the random integer, we'll tell you to go lower. Yeah. If it's higher. The, the, the number, it'll print it higher. If it's lower than the number, then it'll tell you to guess higher. So if you guess one, number, and then it's 30, it'll just get higher. Okay. And then here, you have this try is plus equal to one. Does that mean you can try as much as you want until you get the number? I mean, because you can, but there's this up here. So if you try is equal to zero right now, but, but each time it goes to this value, uh, it's, it's going, going to increment the value by one. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so once you get done, it'll have to break that little chapter you guessed the number. It'll tell you how many tries. Yeah. So, so it'll, it'll tell you here. Yes. 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 Basically, what that means. Okay. So, that's kind of a, a one month post programming summary of how to read code. Now, I'm going to ask you to practice kind of doing this. Just go to the Google machine and type in, you know, Python code example. Put in images and then you look at stuff. Okay. 
Now, no. um, and, and it's, it's just it's just, just in keeping, keeping up with understanding libraries, methods, arguments, variables, and loops. So you have an if loop, which is a single evaluation. You have a while loop, which is just a persistent evaluation that will go over and over itself. You have a for instance, not only really a loop, but a for instance, sort of not a loop, where you have a timer, a finite timer that's ticking down towards a certain point. Right? So the at the for instance is you're saying, okay, I have this array of 17 variables. You're going to do something for each of those 17 variables, but put that to the number. It will run 17 times. For an if, it will run once. For a while, it can run zero times. It can run a billion times. It can keep on running. Like that one time I left the program running and just spun all the numbers up on the screen. <laughs> like that. Um, so, 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 yeah, just, just kind, kind of practice, practice realizing what they're, they're hoping to accomplish here. Is that, that in, in some, some cases, they may not know how long it's going to run for so they can't do a full loop. So they have to open it up and say, okay, this could have run for a long time. Or we needed it to run for a long time. So that you can take static information and optimize it. And then you can take dynamic information and optimize it. Now you can do things with both using the two different kinds of loops. Okay. So this, this the stuff, stuff that I, I'm going to briefly, briefly touch on today, because we've already gone for 51 minutes, um, is it's web stuff. stuff. So the, I think, I think the, do I have the snatch image up here? Let me go to, So we've done basic coding. That's, that's where we just kind of got that. Okay. We're going to go get into coding later, but for the basic concept of understanding how things are set up, we're kind of done with that. So now we're going to take a look at websites. Um, we're going to look at things from the perspective of a tester and developer, as well as the user. Um, and then the rest of the words on the page. <laughs> I, I hate reading things that are on the page printed that are for you. It's like going into the first day of class and all you want to do is put up the syllabus on the whole and read it to you. It's like, yeah, yeah, I don't know if you know this professor we're in college and you learned to read a long time ago. Why in the hell are you having us sit here while you read it to us? Is there going to be snack time when we take it out? Okay, yeah. so I'm going to use Google, Google here, because Google is something that almost everyone uses unless you don't have internet, internet access or access to something else. Or targeted in this being or No one uses it. Even people at Microsoft don't use it. People at Microsoft use Google. <laughs> and then I'll have to go, I can't believe we made beans. That's a little round. And then the one guy that's programmed is sitting over there and I'm still going, please use beans. <laughs> I'll make you better, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, top down perspective of web browsing. Okay. We're going to get into some vocabulary. And please bear with me while I try to explain this because it does not make sense in any kind of logical manner. At all. Which is why I'm starting with it. It'll be, uh, it'll be best. Okay. So, so when, when when you're writing a website, you are uh, using different languages to hopefully tell the browser what you want it to do for you. Okay. So you have things like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, Python, 
um, like HTML5, which is different than HTML. So many other things that I don't really want to go into anymore. So you have these different languages that you can use to talk to the browser. Okay. So you have browsers. They are the vehicles that deliver content to the user. Okay. So we have. So we have Chrome here. Google Chrome. Chrome is the vehicle that we're using to, to deliver Google.com to us, the user. Okay. And that's important because there is a middle area that most people don't know about. Okay. So you have the developers, and they basically they um, create content to the Delivered via vehicle to the user. Okay. There is a middle part here which isn't really talked about much, and it is called the DOM. The DOM is the general staging area. Uh, for content created by developers while the um, browser decides how to read their content. Okay. So essentially the developers will make this code and they'll upload it and it will sit in a bucket that we're going to call the DOM. Okay. And then this bucket is, is it's, it's the same, same bucket for everyone. Okay, everyone is using the same bucket. But Firefox wants it to be different from Internet Explorer. Just by itself. Internet Explorer doesn't want to be on Internet Explorer. So we can't blame really Firefox or Chrome for wanting to be different. So Internet Explorer will take the bucket and say, oh, I know this tag. I know this HTML tag. I'm going to use it like this. And is this the way that it's translating that tag, that code, is different than the way Firefox will pick it up and look at it? So Firefox will pick up the same piece of code and say, oh, I think that they need to do this with that piece of code. And then Chrome will pick it up and look at it and say, oh, no, no, no. You guys are really nice. They want to do this with the code. So you can have a website that you load up in one browser that looks and behaves differently than if you load it up in a different browser, which is retarded and stupid, but they're doing it that way because they're assholes. Okay. Think of, think of it like gas or different cars. You got diesel and you got an electric. There are reasons for that. Browsers don't, don't have the reason that's a business that will fall apart. But bear with me. Pretend though that there was no reason for diesel or an electric. Let's just pretend that we discovered that diesel is the best engine for all things, but for some reason, someone came out with an engine that requires unleaded, and it's more expensive, and creates more pollution, and it's louder, and it's bigger, and it doesn't provide any, any extra work. It is just a worse quality thing in general. And for some reason, a bunch of people looked at it and said, I like this shit. And since they got enough people behind it, they ended up saying, okay, well, now we need to produce unlimited gas. Which is true about the diesel is a little bit better. Okay, okay. So, so you have this, 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 this base, this is base fuel command, it's called oil. <laughs> and that's essentially, that's essentially the content that was created by developers. Okay. And your job, which is basically a refinery, 
that pulls the stuff. And the individual who runs your call, the individual who runs will say, yeah, we need this to be unrelated. And so it sort of changes the content to make it suitable for the vehicle. And that's where a lot of problems come in from the perspective of developers and testers and users, because users don't realize that when something breaks for them, it's not like some developer wrote something and one person looked at it on one page and just didn't pick it up on it. That there are likely dozens, if not hundreds, of scenarios of different um, components that go into testing one change. That it's very well likely that they tested 99 out of 100 scenarios, and then the one scenario that they didn't test it is the one that you're finding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and likewise, and this is this is it's better now because in the past, Microsoft supported it that their previous version of Internet Explorer with the previous operating systems of the Windows. And then that's a problem because uh, for each operating system, it has a base engine requirement. And the, uh, the browser that runs on that engine has different modules and plugs into the engine. And you can run that on different Windows operating systems and have different plugins for each one. So when you make a change, or when we made a change in the past, you'd have to test the Windows XP on Internet Explorer 6 through 11. You need to go to Vista and check it on 6 through 11 on Vista, and then uh, Windows 7, and Windows 8, and Windows 10. And you'd have to do all that over and over and over again, because with a different engine, and the different modules that connect to it, you can have different behaviors because it's pulling from the DOM bucket and translating it all differently. So that's kind of a, a top-down perspective of what web browsing is, is that you have this group that's trying to deliver content to you, and the vehicle that you're choosing to read it with could it translate it and change it from the developer's original intent so that it's not what you experience. It's not, not like, like it's going, going to change, like it says, hey, man, welcome to your screen. It's not like Chrome to go, hey, fucktard, welcome to your screen. And it doesn't do things like, like that. It's more or less things like, is that, that like when, when I, I search, search something in Yahoo, I feel like, like I never find the answer, but then, then when I search, search it in Google, no, no, that, that's, that's, that's that because Google has a much better search algorithm than that. Um, no, okay. no, 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 this is this is more or less if uh, um, well, I, I could, could probably show you. I probably shouldn't show you, but I'm going, going to. to. And the reason why I shouldn't show you, I did it. I don't know if it's all in the next quarter. I just removed all the shortcuts. Okay. Okay. Please don't check. Um, so this is the previous album I worked for. I made mean, it was a better than journal. But, but they made it publicly available. And, and I can do all sorts of chat there. I can turn it on, I can just share it if I want to. But this is live on my like previous company's system. I made this. So, so you're not, you're not smart. <laughs> so, we have this is an internet explorer view of the picture. Okay. Okay. This is just crushed. Internet Explorer. Chrome. So I'll, I'll blow this up here. Okay, so some of the differences is the checkboxes here. You can leave it on there. I can see it. Well, I'm only doing this because we're recording. Oh. All right. So see how these kind of braid in? Yeah. They're white over there. Oh. And see how the words are kind of flush against the boxes? Yeah. They're not flush over here. Oh. Okay. So the the way that it's translated is different. 
Because of a hacker who <laughs> watches this video by email trans pick a will to that company. I'm gonna have to delete that part from the video. But um so when when we load up Google here, it's uh it's taking the content that the developers put into the bucket, and the bucket is delivered to the vehicle, which is the browser. And the browser starts picking pieces out and goes, okay, I think this goes here, I think this does this, I think that does this. Once it gets done, it goes, okay, this is what I think it should look like, and this is what you're seeing. Would Internet Explorer look different at this page, or no? It might. Um, or is it very subtle and things that... Most some of them are big. Some of them are huge. That's what she said. Oh, oh, oh beauty. <laughs> Oh, Google is automatically recommending that you don't use Internet Explorer when <laughs> you go to Google's homepage on Internet Explorer. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, okay, let me zoom in here so we can get a better comparison. They look about the same. Yeah. Maybe a difference in colors. Voice thing, but maybe that's yeah. more just... <laughs> What's different on this page than the other one? Yeah, you know, that was really, that was really fun. Yeah. <laughs> Screw you, second grade teacher. <laughs> so. so, yeah, yeah, there, there are, as you just pointed out, there are differences. What about this? What's that here? Oh, yeah. Same thing. So that's, that's part of the graphics, so it would be weird if it just took out parts of the graphic. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. I yeah, thought it was like a, uh, yep. a send, copy, paste. Oh, okay. Whatever, symbol. Um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, so the developers are writing things for this bucket. Now, with, with these websites, usually what they'll do is they'll have a, a, uh, pe people have done a good job of documenting when they find something in the bucket that Firefox, Chrome, and Internet Explorer all see as different, di different things. So it will pull out this tag and go, oh, Internet Explorer thinks that you're supposed to flash this, and Firefox thinks that it's supposed to fade in and out slowly but not flash, and Chrome thinks that it's supposed to sit on the page and then every now and then flash out and back in. So the opposite of what Internet Explorer thinks, right? Um, and so people will document that and say, okay, depending on what you want this to do, you can tell the bucket and say, okay, in this bucket, you're going to have these three things tied together. They're all going to keychain together, and you're going to pull out one. They're all going to dangle down, and it's going to say, this is for Internet Explorer. This is for Firefox. This is for Chrome. But they're all tied together, and so the browsers will go, oh, I'm Chrome. I'll use that one. And then Internet Explorer will go, I'm in the Explorer. I'm in this one. <laughs> I should feel bad about that, but it don't. It's a perfect example. And then, then they'll take that and they'll use it according to how they think it should be used, which likely matches the translation that they tied it to on... on the underside of the page. So in the actual code, it'll say, like, if Internet Explorer, and then it'll give a value and say, okay, if Firefox, okay. this value, if Chrome, this value. And so, and so it'll detect the browser and, and load in different bucket content for mm -hmm. the browser. But that's an aim to get it so that whatever it is that you see as the user is the same, regardless of if, as if you go to Internet Explorer or Firefox or Chrome. But it does mean doing more work as a developer mm -hmm. to get the same results. Okay. So it's 
it's really messed up how the different companies, different browsing companies have set this up. They all want to read it differently and be their own unique thing. Like, everyone is special. We're special, so we're going to do it differently because we're special. And then it's like, that's special too. <laughs> and Chrome goes, everyone knows. Put your helmet back on and shut up. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's essentially why why this is happening is that the developers originally only had to develop for one bucket, and now they have to develop for one bucket, but they have to put in all this extra code to accommodate the different interpretations of their code. And so it's it's less of a why don't they just fix it and more of a how can we de retard this so that Internet Explorer can understand it essentially um, and uh, along those same lines you have things like uh, um, like we were talking about originally you know, like HTML and CSS mm -hmm. and JavaScript you have all these different things but they all have different um, uh, reasons for use, right? Okay. HTML is basically the uh, the framework. Okay, you're you're basically you, you know the the big buildings they make and how they put those big iron framework up before they put up anything else. Mm -hmm. It's essentially essentially what HTML is. Okay. You're basically building the foundation concept of this is what I want it to have on it. The CSS. Makes it pretty. Okay. okay. Like the interior design? Oh, uh, the exterior. Oh, it makes the exterior pretty? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's like. So it's like so the it's, siding, the roof. The, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so imagine you have that, that base framework, and let's pretend like it's a government building where there's literally nothing on the inside. But CSS makes it pretty on the outside, so you think there has to be an inside. <laughs> so when you go in and you look up, all you see are the steel girders that keep going up. Because there are no floors and there are no roofs, it's just <clears throat> ugly barren on the inside. So CSS is the outside uh, layer that wraps around the HTML to hide how ugly the base HTML is and make you think this is pretty. Okay. JavaScript and um, <laughs> PHP as well, I suppose. They, they are both more functional, so that's where you get things like elevators in a building, or escalators, or drinking fountains, or lights that turn on when you walk past them. Mm -hmm. This adds um, additional uh, functionality to it to make it easier to traverse around. Okay. Um, you can also get things in there like Python, which are similar to PHP, um, and uh, HTML5, which is an upgraded version of HTML. Um, it makes it a little bit more functional, so it's a cross between HTML and JavaScript, and then you have CSS, I want to say six or something, but it's 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 basically different libraries of information with different tools which make it easier to perform whatever tasks that, that you're interested in. Okay. Um, and so uh, yeah, we're gonna go into more detail about what these are later. We're gonna kind of we're gonna wrap this up here and we'll we'll look into more about what HTML is and what it looks like. And we'll open up probably Google and we'll take a look at the code on the page. What? And uh, we'll kind of walk through what is what, what is where. I pushed F twelve. Oh, Junction Junction, what's the function? That's your high school house. Um, rock. Yeah, rock. That's what I said up the rock. The people's church. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of a high level of, of web browsing. It's not as straightforward as people think. And that's why an entire industry exists around creating and testing it. It's because you have these douchebags that won't play nice. I wonder if there's just I mean, 
seemingly infinite amount of jobs. Is, yes. It's just becoming more and more. It's just expanding and right. The internet, the technology, the everything. And and when someone makes a library, a new library, right? Um, the libraries we have now would give the first programmers of computers wet dreams. Like they would, <laughs> they would blow loads in their pants. Even the women, just ejaculate everywhere. <laughs> Well, there's any children watching, listening, but but they would look at how complicated and how involved the code is, and they would be like, "I need everything of this in my life." So, so each day, each week, more and more developers are adding to this giant tree, this giant in this giant web-based uh, library of Congress of information. And the people who are going to start developing next year and be standing on the shoulders of the giants of this year, we're standing on the shoulders of the giants of last year. And that only expands out and deeper. So the more of that that is made, the more people will have benefit to use that and to be able to build upon that to make it bigger and better. You see what I'm saying? So it, oh, it, it builds off of itself and complements itself to get bigger Infinitely, it scales with itself. So it's like rolling a snowball down a hill. Yeah, a hill that doesn't that has have a bottom and has the perfect packing snow condition. <laughs> yeah, great, great packers there. Must be Green Bay. <laughs> when <laughs> couldn't see them. <laughs> when when I guess I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. And you know, future candidates for watching, really <laughs> avoid the clap. That wasn't. That might sound funny, but it hurts so much. Just stop. Stop doing that. And then, anything that came to mind that you want to talk to your Okay. Okay. He's nodding his head. So I guess that's it. Yeah. Well, I hope you got that, future Ramon. And thanks for watching.